there, this is Tony from Pianotone.ca and this is a video that I am super excited about. It's my initial reaction review on a kind of piano I've always wanted but I never thought I'd own, an actual stage piano, my new Yamaha CK61. This keyboard has a ton of features that are going to take me a while to learn, so in this review I've tried to address uh, all the major features and then I've gone into more detail on what I think are the most important ones. And as I get more familiar with the CK, I will be making a series of shorter, more specific videos. So let's check out my review on the Yamaha CK61 uh, stage keyboard. And since the number of keys and the key action are the only differences between the CK61 and the CK88, this review also applies to the CK88. Okay, so why did I think I'd never own an actual stage piano? To be honest, they're super expensive. The brand uh, Nord is considered by most to be the top of the line, and they start at about $3,000 and go up to almost double that from there. Even Yamaha's YC and CP series and Roland's RD series uh, stage keyboards started around the $1,500 US uh, dollar mark, and their top models are far more expensive than that. But then a couple of things happened. The first thing is, I joined a band. Uh, basically, it's just a casual and fun blues rock band with some other old guys, but super fun. So I uh, first started practicing with this band with my Yamaha P125 digital piano, and then I ended up switching to my Yamaha PSR EW425 keyboard so that I'd have access to more uh, organ sounds and some rotary speaker options. And then I heard about these newly released Yamaha CK61 and CK88 stage keyboards that are selling for far less than Yamaha's YC and CP series. So I uh, spent uh, quite a bit of time in my local music store uh, testing them out, uh, spent quite a few lunch hours in a row, and I ended up settling on the 61 key uh, CK61. Okay, so what is a stage piano or a stage keyboard? Well, you'd be correct if you assumed from the name that a stage piano or keyboard is meant to be used in performance situations. But what does that actually mean? Well, to sum that up uh, as quickly as I can in kind of one long sentence, a stage keyboard or piano uh, should have extensive connectivity options, a great user interface so that you can do all the things that your performance requires quickly and easily. And you should also be able to just glance at your keyboard and immediately see what your current settings are. Uh, if you, it should also have registration so you can store your uh, custom setups for quick and easy recall. Uh, it should offer a level of portability that's appropriate for whatever your intended playing situation is. And it should have the voices and other options, such as key action, that meet whatever your personal needs are as a player. So while there's absolutely nothing that keeps you from using any instrument in a performance situation if you want to, uh, would I consider any of the entry to mid-range uh, keyboards or digital pianos that I've reviewed in the past uh, to meet the uh, requirements for being a proper stage piano? I would have to say no. Uh, but the closest I've reviewed would be the Yamaha P125 digital piano, the Casio PXS3000 digital piano, or the Yamaha PSR EW425 keyboard. But even though those have good uh, connectivity, sounds, uh, portability, and they've got good user interfaces, each of those are still lacking in some key areas that a true stage in uh, instrument really should have. And something like a Roland FP30X with a really basic user interface, in my opinion, not even close to meeting the requirements for being a stage piano. Okay, so enough about what is a stage piano. Let's get to the review on the Yamaha CK61. So Yamaha has had uh, two lines of stage keyboards, both of which have been super popular and generally well uh, received with performers, the CP series and the YC series. Now, I've never rev uh, reviewed either of those, and I don't know a ton about them, but both of those uh, series started around the $1,500 US dollar mark and go up quite a bit from there. So enter the new CK series from Yamaha with 61 key and 88 key versions. The 61 key is around 1,000 US dollars and the 88 key is around 1,500 US dollars. So these are considerably more accessible to us beginner and intermediate players. So what is the difference between the CK61 and the CK88? The differences are the number of keys, the key action, and of course the dimensions and the weight. With the CK88 weighing in at uh, 28 pounds and the CK61 weighing in at only 12 pounds. Everything else is exactly the same between these two models. Okay, key action. The CK88 has 88 fully weighted graded hammer action keys. This piano shares the same GHS uh, dual sensor action, which I love, with the Yamaha P125 and DGX670 digital pianos. The CK61 has a new action from Yamaha called the FSB action, which stands for Future System Basic. This is apparently a new and improved version of a super popular FS action that was found on FX1 organs that came out in the 80s. 
While the action isn't technically weighted, it does have kind of a semi-weighted feel to it. For a non-weighted synth action, it has a noticeably heavier than normal initial key resistance and an increased uh, key travel. And that really helps you play piano pieces uh, expressively and with more control, while still being light and smooth enough to play organ pieces with glissandos much easier than you can do on a fully uh, weighted uh, digital piano. So as someone who has always preferred fully weighted actions that are on the light side, how do I feel about this uh, semi-weighted feeling FSB action? I like this action a lot. It really is a great compromise between the fully weighted action on my P125 piano and the super light action on my PSR EW425 keyboard. I've found firsthand in trying the, all of these keyboards out with my new band that while the action on my P125 is the best option for piano songs, that organ songs were much better with the super light action on my PSR EW425. After testing out the CK61 in a few band uh, practices, I found that this new FSB action is basically the perfect compromise for me. With a heavier action and more key travel than my PSR EW425 keyboard, I can play piano pieces far more expressively on the CK61 than on the EW425, but it's still light and smooth enough for those uh, organ songs and glissandos. And I do have to say that the FSB action on the CK61 feels very sturdy and very solidly built. It really is a, a huge upgrade over the action on my PSR EW425. Now with all that being said, uh, there is one thing about the key bed that I would change if I could, and that is the octave width. I've mentioned this in other reviews in the past. Uh, many synth action keyboards, including my PSR EW425 and now my CK61, have an octave width of about 160 millimeters, which is narrower than the 164, 165 millimeter octave width you see on most fully weighted digital pianos. So while this isn't perfect for me, uh, once you hear about all the other features, you're gonna understand why I was totally okay with uh, compromising on that. Okay, the user interface. In reviews, I usually talk about uh, voices before uh, getting to the user interface, but with a stage keyboard, the user interface is really important, and this user interface is nothing short of spectacular. So I really wanna go over that first. If you followed my channel over the years, you've probably seen me in my reviews having less and less patience or tolerance for pianos or keyboards that make you deep dive through a menu system, or worse yet, uh, have to look up or uh, memorize uh, complex function key combinations just to change common settings. Well, even if I was only going to use this as a home keyboard and not as a stage uh, keyboard with my band, the user interface is still a total breath of fresh air because every setting you could possibly want is right at your fingertips. This is by far my favorite user interface on any keyboard I've ever used. Okay, so with all these buttons and controls, the interface can be a, a bit overwhelming at first, but it's really well organized and it's crazy simple and super intuitive to use. On the left side, we've got a pitch bend wheel and uh, an assignable uh, mod wheel, the master volume. We've got some super handy uh, buttons for uh, up and down for transposing and for octave switching. These are two sets of buttons that I think should be included on every keyboard. Now note that when you use these buttons, not only uh, does it show you on the display that uh, you've uh, transposed keys like I just did, but it also leaves this lit up so that I know that I've transposed something here. Same thing with the octave switching. If I uh, go up an octave, it's going to show me on the screen and then it's going to leave this lit so that I know that I've done that. Then the rest of this entire uh, left hand section is devoted to the uh, amazing organ voices on the CK. We've got controls for turning a uh, rotary speaker on or off and controlling the speed. And we've got uh, eight drawbar sliders that are marked uh, with the pipe length that they represent. And there are controls for uh, vibrato and chorus and uh, percussion. So if I'm on one of the organ voices, like the uh, Hammond, you're gonna see the default uh, drawbar setting uh, in the, uh, on the screen. But as soon as I start moving uh, one of the drawbars, then it's gonna update the screen with what I've changed. The center section is the main area for you for working with the CK. I'm going to talk about this amazing little area in, uh, in a minute. Now in the center we've got a super clear and uh, easy to read display. I love how dark the background is. Menu settings are super easy to navigate through uh, with the up and down buttons or with the knob to make selections and a uh, simple enter and exit key. There's one button giving you access to live set settings. These are settings that you can save within a registration. This is awesome because it makes it super clear what gets included in a registration. And then the menu button is just for uh, setting up uh, general functions. 
Then we've got voice uh, category buttons to help you narrow down your voice selections. Once you're within a category, like I'm in the, let's see if I go to the electric piano category here, default one is the 78 Rhodes. I can uh, navigate uh, through the category by repeatedly pressing the electric piano button, or I could use the up and down keys, or if I want to see all the voices I'm choosing from, then I could use the uh, dial. Then beside the category buttons, we've got uh, mono and type for controlling portamento settings, and then we've got unison and type for uh, controlling some really cool auto layering effects. Uh, so if I'm on the CFX Grand Piano right now, and then I hit uh, unison, and I'm going to set it to multi-layer. Basically, it's just going to duplicate what I'm playing. If I switch it to harmonics, it's going to duplicate it a uh, octave above. And if I go to subharmonics, it's going to be an octave below. Now at the bottom, uh, you've got the live set area. This is where your registrations are stored. You've got 20 pages, and within each page are eight live sets. So you basically have 20 pages or groups of eight live set, uh, sets or registrations for a total of 160 live sets. Now something that's important to note here is that there are 80 built-in live sets that are included with the keyboard's 160 registrations. So Yamaha has done a lot of the work for you in setting up some really nice common presets with various effects and layers all set up and ready for you to use. This is especially helpful for novice players like me that are still new to setting up effects and uh, voice combinations. i found that I often look to some of these first as opposed to trying to find and configure a certain voice myself, and I usually find what I want. When I get to the uh, voice demo, I'll include some of these uh, built-in presets. So these built-in live sets fill up the first 80 registrations, so they are pages 1 to 10. So for example, when I turn on the uh, CK, uh, it actually loads live set 1-1 one, one by default. Uh, this is live set is just the default voice, which is the CFX Grand Piano. So if I press these different live set buttons, I'm going to be going through uh, the eight different uh, live sets that are available within page number one. So I've got a uh, 78 Rhodes, a uh, Warm Reeds. So these are all different uh, live sets that are uh, set up within page one that I can choose from. Now, at first I thought these built-in live sets were kind of or organized haphazardly, but there actually is sort of a system to them. Uh, I would have thought originally, put all the piano uh, voices in one set, all the organs in the next, and so on. But instead, at least it seems to from my browsing so far, that similar voices se uh, tend to be the same number within a set. For example, in page one, if I go to uh, live set seven, I've got a jazz split, and this is actually uh, a Hammond organ that's been set up with certain drawbar selections, and there's some splitting going on. If I go to page two, I've got a uh, rock rotary Hammond organ. If I go to page three, I've got the red organ, which is a uh, Vox organ with some uh, drawbar settings. So to get to the empty sets, I go up to page 11, and the reason that you're seeing a, a set here is because I've actually started uh, playing around with this a little bit. So this is actually a custom uh, uh, live set that I've set up. Then I've got another one set up in uh, number two. And then if I go to number three, you're going to see these all say init sound. So these are all going to be uh, empty live sets. So then on page 12 uh, all the way up to page 20 are going to be uh, empty. So if I go back to... Uh, Number two, you can see I've actually named that. You can actually name your live set. So I've named that Walk With You, which is, uh, this is the live set that I've set up for my original song called Walk With You. So super cool that you can name these. And I'm actually going to go over uh, this uh, live setup with you a little bit later in the review. Okay, now on the right half of the uh, user interface, this is all about effects. Now this is not my area of expertise. So in this video, I'm just going to quickly go over what we've got here. We've got uh, sections for uh, uh, cutoff and resonance, attack and release, drive, We've got two assignable uh, miscellaneous effects, uh, so things like chorus, phaser, etc. Then I've got a selection for uh, delay, and then I've got a selection for reverb, and then I've got a uh, just an onboard uh, three-band uh, equalizer, which is awesome. Now you might have noticed as I was scrolling through these uh, built-in live sets that all these lights are going on and off and uh, changing color. Well, that brings me back to this section here that I skipped earlier on, which is one of my favorite parts of this user interface. I call it the channel control area. This small little section of the CK does an absolute ton of stuff, and it does it better than any keyboard I've ever uh, seen. 
So on the CK series, you can have up to three simultaneous voices and you can layer or split them pretty much any way you like and each of them have their own effects processor. So they can each have their own distinct effects applied. So I've got voices A, B, and C. For each voice, you've got a relative volume slider, which is super cool. Another thing that should be on every single keyboard. You've got an on and off uh, backlit toggle. So right now my piano is enabled. If I turn that off, it's now gone. And then I can just turn it back on again on the fly as I'm playing. You can do that with any of the three voices. And then you've got the ABC buttons to switch the effects and the, all of the controls on the keyboard to pertain to the voice that you've just selected. And all the buttons are color coded. So you can see I'm on voice number one, the CFX uh, Grand Piano. This voice has been assigned to voice A and voice A is yellow. If I press the on off for voice B, you can see it gives me a 1978 uh, Rhodes electric piano. Now I can change that to whatever voice I want, but notice how the effects are now blue matching the color of voice B. So now all of these effects choices and any changes I make are only going to apply to voice B. If I press the A button again, this all turns yellow and it goes back to highlighting the piano button. So now I'm back on voice number A and then now any of the changes I make to the effects are just gonna apply to voice A. And then of course I can do the same thing, but if I turn on voice uh, C, which is a pad, then now these are color coded green and then now all of the effects apply to voice three. Now, of course, the physical knobs don't move when you switch back and forth, but the effects will be remembered the way that you saved them. This is really well done, Yamaha. Okay, so now on to the layering and splitting. This is also amazing. So right now, I've got three voices. I've got my uh, CFX uh, Grand 78 Rhodes electric piano, and I've got a pad. So if I press split, this is how I can cycle through all of my uh, layering and splitting options. I can have voice A on the left and voice B and C on the right. I can layer all three of them together as voice A, B, and C. I can have them all split into their own sections. So as I scroll through these options, like you've pretty much got every combination you could possibly want. This is super cool. And even if I've got them in three, set, uh, three sections, when I hit split point, now I can actually define the, three, or the, the two split points that I want to split those three sections up. And then if I go back to, uh, let's just go to a more common kind of a setup, like a A in the left, let's say I had a bass down there and then B and C were layered in the right. And then I go split point, then now I've just got the one split point to choose from. This is so versatile and so easy to understand and use, it just makes me smile. As an example of uh, something that I've uh, actually done with this, playing around with the live sets, if I go to my live set 11.1, on this live set, which I've set up for a song that my band is playing, I've actually got it set up for a piano at the start of the song. Then I can turn on uh, layer B for a uh, pad. And then there's a part during the song where I've got a, uh, a saxophone solo up high. So I've actually got the uh, saxophone up here, but you can see that I've got this shifted down two octaves. So you can actually do the octave shifts and that type of stuff uh, just on uh, each individual uh, uh, voice channel if you want. So this is super, super cool. Okay, voices. So now that I've gotten all my excitement for the user interface uh, out of the way, let's talk about the 363 voices and 128 notes of polyphony on the CK61 and the CK88. The CK series uses the sample-based technologies Advanced Wave Modeling 2, or AWM2, for the majority of the voices. And this is the same tone generation technology that the Yamaha CP stage pianos use, and they're about twice the price of the CK, uh, CK equivalents. And AWM is used for the organ flutes. These organ voices that use AWM tone generation are actually inherited from the uh, Yamaha Reface YC series, which is Yamaha's mini but really good quality keyboard that specializes in just organ sounds. So how does the AWM2 and AWM tone generation compare to some of the other keyboards I'm familiar with? Well, I'm, I'm definitely not a technical uh, specialist on different uh, tone generator technology, but I can offer my personal opinion on the main piano voice, the electric pianos, and the organs. The main piano sound on uh, the CK series is Yamaha's CFX Grand uh, Sample. My Yamaha PSR EW425 keyboard has some great sounds on it and a great main piano sound for the price. 
but the main piano on the CK61 is significantly better, and it should be. Uh, you can buy two and a half of my uh, EW425s for the price of this keyboard. So this difference is going to be due to a combination of the following. The CK is using AWM2 for tone generation for the piano instead of AWM like on the uh, EW425. And the CK has twice the polyphony at 128 versus 64. And as I mentioned, the CK is also using a CFX Grand uh, piano sample as opposed to the PSR's piano sample, which is Yamaha's live concert Grand uh, sample, which was inherited from the older Tyros keyboards. So how about comparing the CFX Grand uh, sample on the uh, CK61 to the uh, CFX Grand sample on my DGX 670 digital piano with 256 notes of polyphony and virtual resonance modeling. Well, that's a different story. Uh, to my somewhat experienced, but still not the greatest ears, I find the CFX Grand samples on the CK and DGX are actually pretty close for the most part. But where the DGX starts to outshine the CK is with the virtual uh, resonance modeling on the main piano voices that enhances the samples as you vary your playing dynamics. You can really hear the sample change on the DGX, but on the CK, the dynamic changes in the sample just aren't as detailed, as not, at least not to my ears. But that being said, the piano samples on the CK are still absolutely fantastic. And in my opinion, the CK pianos are noticeably better than those on my Yamaha P125, which uses the older CF uh, grand sample. And keep in mind, in a live setting with a band, to be honest, no one is likely to notice much of a difference between the samples on any of these keyboards. You really need to be listening to a clean recording through headphones to pick up the, any of those details, at least in my opinion. Okay, electric pianos. Uh, there are some fantastic electric piano samples on the CK61, and in particular, there are a lot of really cool presets that I'm going to be talking about that are included, where Yamaha has done me the favor of configuring some commonly used uh, electric piano effects. There are multiple versions of Rhodes pianos and Wurlitzers, and these easily outshine the equivalent voices on the PSR EW425, and I honestly think they're better or at least equivalent to those on my DGX670, especially the ones that have been included in these presets. Okay, organs. This is really where the CK shines. With the AWM organ flute engine inherited from the uh, Reface YC keyboard, the physical drawbars, the organ percussion and effects section, and most notably the onboard uh, rotary speaker controls with rotary on off and rotary speed, the CK61's organs are absolutely fabulous in my opinion. And it's nice for a change to actually see organ names kind of hinted at a bit more uh, clearly in the menu than what you see on most keyboards. The main organs are H, mostly likely a Hammond, V, most likely a Vox, and F, most likely a Farfisa organ. So even though the organs are great on my other Yamahas, these ones really are a step above in my opinion, especially from having the added physical uh, controls available. And I have to say that this FSB key action on the CK61 really does shine for organ playing. Okay, so enough talking already. Here is a quick demo of some of the main voices on the CK61. And I'll also include some of those built-in live sets that came with the CK for you to check out as well.
Okay, so at this stage, I've only had this keyboard for a few weeks and have probably only listened to a fraction of the voices, so I will be making more videos on the voices on the CK61, including some comparisons to my other Yamaha keyboards. But so far, I have to say, I am super impressed. Okay, so on to another big requirement for a stage piano, connectivity. 
And just like with the user interface, the CK61 knocks this out of the park as well. All the ports are on the back, and something to mention right off the bat that I love, they're all labeled on the top of the keyboard. This makes it super easy to find connections without having to go behind the keyboard, tilt or flip it, etc. I don't know why all keyboards don't do this. They really should. So here's what we've got for connectivity. There's a one quarter inch headphone port. Uh, there's proper quarter inch left and right line outs for connecting to external audio equipment like PAs, amps, mixers, or audio interfaces. There are two uh, one quarter inch assignable foot pedal ports. Uh, setting up pedals is kind of a two-step process, but this is super cool because you configure what you want them to do within your live sets. So you can make it song specific or set specific. Step one in setting these up is to tell the keyboard what kind of pedal or pedals you're using. You do this in the general uh, settings menu. The choices are FC3A half on. Uh, the FC3A is Yamaha's uh, pedal that is compatible with half pedaling. And this is the choice that you're gonna make if you want half pedaling to be on. Then there's FC3A half off, same sustain pedal, but for whatever reason you want half pedaling disabled. Then there's FC4A or FC5. Uh, the FC4A is Yamaha's piano style pedal that is not compatible with half pedaling. And the FC5 is the brick style pedal. Both of these are basically just on off switches. So this setting would probably be intended for a non uh, Yamaha generic sustain pedal. Although my no name pedal seems to work fine as a generic sustain pedal switch, either with this choice or with either of the FC3 choices. So I'm not sure that it matters. Then the FC7, uh, this is Yamaha's expression pedal. So I'm assuming it's uh, also the setting you'd use for a generic expression pedal. I actually have a no name uh, expression pedal on order. So more on that once I get it. The other setting that you can set up in, in the main menu is if you want to use your pedals to navigate up or down through your live sets. Given that this disables their use for things like sustain, you'd probably only use this if you're a pure organ or synth player. And then step two is to set up within your live set menu uh, and the controller submenu. This is where you can assign what uh, the mod wheel does and also what each pedal does. Now this topic will be a future video all by itself because for each pedal and the mod wheel, you can choose from 119 control change uh, options. Basically, you can control all sorts of effect settings, the rotary speed for organs, or even the draw bars using the pedals. The full list is in the manual and the data list section. Things that caught my eye was setting up uh, possibly the mod wheel to control the USB audio in volume and the left uh, pedal to control uh, the rotary speed for organs. But I'm sure I'm going to refine that uh, those choices much more as I get uh, more used to the CK61. There's also a switch on the back to enable or disable speakers. Note that if you've got headphones connected, the switch is going to have no effect. Uh, there's a Bluetooth audio in to stream external audio into the keyboard's uh, headphones, speakers, and audio outputs. And I have to say, I've been using this as my main audio in for streaming and lessons and backing tracks for practicing for a few weeks now. And the Bluetooth connection is awesome. It never uh, drops, never seems to need resetting, and it's super dependable. It's much like the Bluetooth connection on my DGX670. I found that the Bluetooth connections on the Yamahas I've owned uh, to be much more dependable than the Rolander Casio products that I've had. There's MIDI DIN in and out ports. Now these are ports that I always thought I would probably never use myself, but they are definitely ports that tons of performing keyboard players will consider uh, mandatory. These ports allow you to connect your keyboard to other keyboards or MIDI sound sources and use your keyboard uh, to trigger those sounds or to use another keyboard to trigger sounds on your keyboard. The use case that I could potentially see for me with these ports is if after having spent a bunch more time with the CK61, if there end up being some songs where I really wish I had 88 fully weighted keys, I could get a basic 88 fully weighted uh, MIDI controller and use that for just those songs. And for my band, that would also add the very cool option of being able to have two people play keyboard at the same time. With the CK61, you can actually assign an external MIDI capable keyboard to control voice A, for example, and then have voice B and or C controlled by the CK. That's super cool. Then we've got a USB to host port for connecting to a device. And just like with many of Yamaha's other products, this port doesn't just uh, transmit MIDI data. It also has a built-in audio interface. So it also sends audio data and it sends audio data in both directions. This is a massive feature. It allows you to do a few pretty fantastic things. First of all, you can send all of the CK's audio out through this port to a device to record CD quality direct audio without needing an external audio interface box. So you can send direct audio to an audio track in a DAW app like GarageBand, 
or you can send direct audio to a camera app on your phone and easily make a performance video with high quality audio and all with just a USB cable and an appropriate adapter for your device like a lightning adapter for an iPhone. And since the audio goes in both directions, you can stream audio in from an external source like playing backing tracks from an iPad. But even cooler than that, let's say you're using an external MIDI sound source and you're triggering those sounds from the CK's keyboard. On keyboards without a built-in audio interface, in order to hear those sounds, you would have to connect that external MIDI sound bank to a PA or to an amp, or you would have to route that device's audio back into your keyboard's auxiliary in jack, which often results in some latency. Well, with a built-in audio interface, that external audio automatically comes straight back to the CK keyboard so that you can hear it through the CK's headphones, speakers, and lineouts without any latency. There's a USB uh, flash drive port. You can use a USB flash drive to do a couple of pretty cool things. You can back up your live sets, and if you want your entire keyboard settings backed up to a flash drive as well, you can also back that up. But the really cool thing is you can replay backing tracks from a flash drive and store what track it is within a live set. And then uh, you can configure your keys for file related functions. So for example, in my live set for my original song, Walk With You, I have the backing track file saved in my live set along with my voices. And I have the track's volume relative to my voices also saved there. And I have the rightmost key on the keyboard set to start and stop the track. Okay, so I've got uh, my uh, live set 11.2 uh, loaded up for my song, Walk With You. I've got a USB uh, flash drive that has a WAV file in it that I've set up uh, also within this live set so that when I hit the rightmost key, it's going to start and stop my uh, backing track, and then I can play along. This is super cool because on a lot of keyboards, yes, you can have registrations with your voice settings and yes, you can replay a backing track, but in most cases, those two things aren't tied together. You have to go looking for your backing track even after you've loaded your registration. This is an awesome feature. Okay, now on to yet another awesome feature. I was super impressed with the mic input that came with my Yamaha PSR EW425 keyboard, but the CK61 takes this a big step further. It has two one quarter inch AD input jacks with a gain control and their own effects. This is huge. There are two jacks, a left slash mono jack, which you would use for a dynamic mic, not a condenser, or a guitar or a bass. And if you had another keyboard, synthesizer, or an external audio player, you could connect uh, stereo audio input sources to the left and right inputs. And once they're connected, you can configure the input volume relative to the keyboard's overall volume, and you have a gain knob on the back of the keyboard, and you have a huge set of effects to choose from, including uh, chorus, uh, flanger, phaser, uh, tremolo, distortion, compressor, EQ, wah, delay, reverbs, and more. And once you have these effects and settings all set up for your inputs, you can save those within a live set as well. And keep in mind, all of the CK's audio gets sent to the speakers, headphone, the lineouts, and the USB out ports. So if you're using the USB to host port to connect to a phone and record a performance video, your vocals and any other input like a guitar are gonna be included in that recording. That's actually exactly how I'm recording this video right now. I've just got my mic connected to the AD input on the CK61 and the USB to host uh, port is connected uh, with a lightning adapter to my iPhone, which is recording this video. No external audio interface is required. Okay, so just a quick uh, introduction into uh, using the uh, AD inputs on the uh, CK88 and the uh, CK61. Uh, I've right now got my uh, Samson Dynamic mic uh, connected to the left mono input on the uh, CK61. And there actually is a gain knob. I've only got it to uh, turned to about 60-70% or so uh, on the back. And there is a volume you can, you can configure uh, for the AD input volume in on the uh, keyboard itself. I actually have that set to max. It might need to go down a little bit. But uh, there is something that you have to do to get your mic uh, set up properly uh, right out of the box. And that is, because the uh, input can take either a uh, line level instrument like a guitar or a keyboard, or it can take a microphone, which is not a line level instrument, then uh, you actually have to configure that first. So you need to go into, and I've already done that, that's why you can hear, my, hear me talking. You have to go into Menu, 
and then general, and then audio, and then there's an AT, uh, AD input type. When I go in there, right now it's on mic, so I'm going to switch this to line, which is the default out of the box, and also what you would want to use if you were using a keyboard or a guitar. And when I do that, you're going to hear the volume go way down. So I'm going to keep talking at the same volume. And now I'm on the uh, line level volume. You probably can't hear me. I'm going to turn the gain up. Now the gain is at maximum. And the piano volume is at maximum. So that's maximum gain, uh, maximum volume. Uh, but if I was to play the piano with that, it's going to be way too loud. So I'm going to turn So now I'm back on the mic setting, and then you can hear that now that's much more in line with the uh, with the keyboard volume. And I can also go into uh, the uh, uh, settings menu, which you use for your live sets, and adjust the uh, the mic volume on on the menu, and then save that within my live set as well. Now it's important that I plug my mic into the left mono uh, port, not into the right port, because if I plug it into the right port. I'm only going to get uh, a signal out of uh, the right side. If I plug it into the left port and there's nothing else plugged into the right port, then the keyboard is automati automatically going to duplicate that on both the left and the right. So that's why you're hearing me out of both the left and the right uh, speakers right now. So now we can uh, also throw some effects in here and make some other modifications, but that you don't do in the general uh, uh, setup. You do that in the settings menu, which is what applies to just your live set. That way you can save different uh, settings uh, for your AD input to different live sets. So I have to go into uh, the settings menu for the live set, scroll down to AD input, and then uh, I can affect the volume, but first I'm gonna do the effects. So I'm gonna go input effect one. And that can do input effect one and input effect two. So I'm gonna go input effect one and then I'm gonna go type. And now through is no effects. And then now I'm into a chorus, SPX chorus, symphonic, all these different effects. So I'm gonna scroll up to some reverbs. So this is hall reverb, and then room reverb. I'm gonna go back to hall reverb. So now I've got much more, uh, well, I've got a nice effect, and I've also got much more uh, volume to play along with the piano. I want to walk with you. Oh, we got too much volume relative to the piano. Also a little bit too much reverb. Let's turn that down. So if I hit exit, I can change the depth and the rate. I'll go to the depth, hit enter, and let's turn that down to a more realistic level. I'm going from 64 down to 30. And if I hit exit a couple of times, now I can affect the volume. Right now it's maxed at 127. I'm gonna turn that down to, let's try 100, let's see how that goes. I want to walk with you. So you can keep on messing with that as much as you like, but super, super cool. But just remember, if you're using a mic, it has to be a dynamic mic. Also make sure you plug it into the left port, not the right port. And also make sure that you uh, go into the main menu and switch your AD input type to be mic as opposed to line. Now let's uh, check out the guitar. Now I can't have both of these hooked up at the same time. I guess I technically could, but if I did, then uh, one of them, whichever's plugged into the right port, is only going to come out of the right ear. And if I'm trying to uh, talk with the uh, microphone, it's going to be really quiet because the guitar needs to be set up as line. And uh, you can only configure, you can't configure a separate line versus mic for the left and the right. There, It's basically one setting that applies to both. So I'm going to hook up my uh, guitar and uh, just go through some of the effects and stuff for you. But I won't be able to talk to you at the same time because I won't have a mic. Let's check that out.
Okay, so other features, portability. Both the CK88 and the CK61 are super portable. Uh, they can both run on batteries, and they're both light compared to their competitors. The CK88 weighs in at 28 pounds, which for a keyboard with fully weighted action, built-in speakers, and all these onboard controls and a display is extremely light. My CK61 is insanely portable, weighing in at only 12 pounds and is crazy slim and narrow yet it feels so solidly uh, put together. The, uh, this keyboard is only two pounds heavier than my Casio Tone CTS-1, and yet it includes speakers more than twice as par uh, powerful and all of these onboard controls. Okay, speakers. The speakers on both the CK88 and CK61 are the same. There are two six watt, 12 centimeter by six centimeter backwards and downward facing speakers for a total of 12 watts. And as I mentioned, there is a switch on the back to or, or enable or disable the speakers, and you can also select either normal or table settings for speaker EQ. The table setting pushes more uh, low end through the backward facing speakers and is a better choice if you're using the CK on a table as opposed to a stand that's open on the bottom. For 12 watts, these speakers sound pretty awesome to me. They are plenty loud and clear enough for practice and home use, and you could probably get away with playing a small, reasonably quiet uh, venue like a cafe with just these speakers, but for performing, you're still likely going to need to connect to a PA or use an app. But in that case, these speakers would be awesome as monitors to help you hear yourself as you play. Here's a quick demo on the speakers, just as picked up by my iPhone's built-in mic. I'll demo the table versus normal speaker EQ as well. Okay, apps. The CK series is compatible with Yamaha's Rec and Share app, which is an alternative to your phone's built-in camera app that you can use for recording high-quality performance videos without needing an external audio interface. Then I should also talk about Sound Mondo. The CK series is compatible with Sound Mondo, which is a sound sharing website by Yamaha that allows Yamaha keyboard users to upload sound setting files and share them with other users. To be honest, I don't know much about this, but I will eventually look into it and make a video on it. But for now, just know that it is there, and if you want more info, Google Sound Mondo and you can read up on it. So dislikes or what is missing? Well, this is going to be a very short list because I am super impressed with my new CK61, but here goes. There is a music rest available. I don't think it's included, though, for the CK88, but there is no place to attach a music rest for the CK61. This really surprised me when I unboxed it, especially since tablets or iPads have become a pretty common sight on the small stage. I thought about looking for a way to attach something, but then I thought better of that and started uh, shopping for some type of stand or clamp for my iPad that will attach to my keyboard stand. I'll post an update on that when I find something that works well. Now, as I mentioned, while I do really like this FSB action, I would have preferred a slightly bigger octave width that matches my digital piano, but you can't have everything. And the last thing isn't something that's missing as much as it is to say if Yamaha had made a CK73 or a CK76 with just a few more keys, I would have bought that in a heartbeat. But given the ease of the octave switching with the onboard controls and the ability to save appropriate octave switches into my song-specific live sets, I'm fine with the 61. Okay, the verdict. Well, you can probably guess what my verdict is. The CK61 is absolutely fabulous. The sounds are fantastic, with the organ sounds and controls definitely being highlights. The connectivity is absolutely amazing. The key action is a great compromise between fully weighted and non-weighted synth action keys, especially for those who want to play a lot of organ pieces. And the user interface is an absolute joy to use. It is so easy to do everything I could ever imagine needing to do. And on top of all that, it can run on batteries and only weighs 12 pounds. And the other huge feature of the CK series, price. At less than half of other stage keyboards from Yamaha, Roland, and Nord with all of these features, I think these are a fantastic value. I'm personally super thrilled these came out before I ever went out and bought a more expensive stage keyboard. So I can super enthusiastically recommend the Yamaha CK61 and the CK88. 
The only decision you need to make between the two is the key action and the portability. If you're going to play nothing but piano pieces and really want a fully weighted action, then the CK88 is for you. But if you're wanting to play a lot of organ pieces and or you're looking for something more portable and you're totally okay with having a non-weighted key action that is still expressive enough for piano pieces, then check out the CK61. So that's pretty much it for this video. As I mentioned, I will definitely be making more videos on the CK61. So if you like this content, please smash the like button and subscribe to my channel. That does really help me out. And also means you won't miss any new videos I post on these keyboards. I've left affiliate links in the description below for you to check out uh, current prices from Amazon on these keyboards, as well as a link to uh, the awesome custom bag I bought for my CK. I'm actually going to make a super short video on that uh, soon. And also some links to some online piano training I recommend, including a new course I've registered in that is focused on playing rock songs that I absolutely love. So thanks again for stopping by. Happy piano playing and happy piano shopping. Have an awesome day.